Hello and welcome to another video of abstract thesis series and in today's video we are going to discuss the newly released features of field parameter in direct lake mode in June 2025 release. Friends, Power BI is changing every month and bringing in new features. Power BI is doing this for the last 10 years. Yes, Power BI is completing its 10th anniversary. So with that, let's jump on the release notes of June 2025. So I'm here on the June 2025 feature summary and if you scroll down little you will find one of the new features which came in this one is update to numeric range and field parameters preview. So let's click on this feature and understand what this feature is. The numeric range parameters and field parameters are a great way to provide flexibility to your report users. When working with Power BI projects CBIP in Power BI desktop with the semantic models that contain direct lake tables, you are remotely connected to the semantic models. So it does not update it on desktop, it actually updates it directly on the service. This scenario is often called as remote modeling. Field parameters were not supported in this scenario until today. As soon as you connect to the semantic model, you will be able to create field parameters. In the newer version, you will be able to do Additionally, this month we are enhancing the accessibility of the field parameter generated by UI. A button has been added in the model view within the desktop. So in the desktop, in the model view itself, you will be able to see numeric range and field parameters. You will also find the button while editing a semantic model in Power BI services. In the Power BI service also we are going to get it. This feature is now enabled in direct lake mode. And especially in Microsoft Fabric, you were asking when the field parameters will be supported. So it has been supported now. So let's go ahead and experiment this feature in one of our direct lake model. So for that, I'm jumping onto the another tab where I have already opened Microsoft Fabric. I am in the Power BI experience using app.powerbi.com. Here I'm going to open my workspace 01-GA Fabric. As I previously opened it, I can see it in the quick links. Let me open that and here I would like to create a new direct lake semantic model where I would like to experiment. I can do it in the existing semantic models also but just would like to tell you how to create a direct lake semantic model also. For that I'm going to go to lake 03. So I scroll down here I have lake 03 which is a lake house. I can either go to the lake house or SQL analytics endpoint of the lake house. And from there I can create semantic model. So I'm here on the lake house explorer and inside the lake house explorer you can see I have tables like customer, geography, item and sales. Now I would like to use them to create my new semantic model and this is new custom semantic model for which we have been given option under the home tab in the ribbon top. So let me click on the new semantic model and it will ask me for the name and the set of table I wanted to have here. So let me give it as a name, check, field, param. We can also create numeric parameter as given in the documentation. But right now we just wanted to see one example and that is with the field parameters. I can add all the tables. So I have a sales schema and I have a DBO schema. So I would like to take it from the DBO schema. I will take all the four tables and click on confirm. It will create a new custom semantic model for me. So my model is created. Let me quickly create the relationship. If you are a subscriber to the channel, you might be knowing that I have this common sales table, which I join with other dimensions on the common keys. And most of the time, those common keys have common name. Like item ID in the sales table can be joined with the item ID of item table. This is going to be a many to one single directional join. Let me save this. Same way, I'm going to connect customer ID of sales with the customer ID of customer. Again, many to one single directional join. I'm going to repeat the same exercise. City ID will be joining with the city ID of geography. This is again going to be many to one single directional relationship. The relationship direction is one table filtering the many side of the table and many sides of the table is nothing but our sales table or the fact table. As you can see in this UI, you can see new parameter as an option. And inside the new parameter, I have numeric range and field parameters. I can create any one of these, but for today's example, I'm going to create field parameter and that to access field parameter. As of now, I have not created any majors in this model. So I will avoid major field parameters, but you can watch my previous videos 
how to create access field parameter and major field parameter to get dynamic access as well as dynamic measures in Power BI reports. So let's click on fields to create a field parameter. Let's call it access. And inside the access, we are going to drag categorical variables. So I'm going to drag brand, category, subcategory. And from geography dimension, I'm going to drag city and state. And let me click on create. You can see the access field parameter table has been created. You will find the very similar code you have seen in the field parameters. You can see this inside the model view as well as table view. Inside the table view, you can see a little different icon which is telling the behavior of this particular table is different from the others. Now let's try to create a report and see whether it is working as expected or not. For that, we will go to file, create new report. This option of create new report has been very recently moved inside the file. My empty report has opened up. I will click on a visual clustered column chart to put it into the canvas. Let me make it a little bigger. On the X axis, I will drag access and on the Y axis from the sales, I will drag quantity, which should become sum of quantity. I can drill down to the next level or expand to the next level as per need. We are able to see the axis. As a next step, I would like to change this axis dynamically. For that, I'm going to create a slicer on the field parameter. So let me click on the empty space and click on slicer. And let me drag axis inside the slicer. It is already shown on brand. So let me click on category. Now my visual is shown on the category. Let me click on the subcategory. Now my visual is shown on subcategory. Let me click on city. My visual is shown on city. Let me click on state. My visual is shown on state. Let's quickly test the feature which came few days back, persistent sorting on the axis. Let me go to the ellipsis icon three dots, sort axis on state, and let me also change it to sort ascending. Let me try to change it to other axis brand. You can see it is still sorted on the axis category, it is still sorted on the axis subcategory, city, and state. So, in this video, you have seen that we can natively create fields parameter or numeric parameter in direct lake model and we don't need any workaround for that. Also, we have seen the persistent sorting is working even when they are created from direct lake models UI. So why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you. Keep watching, keep asking questions in comments, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos. Thank you.